Schools are the party's front lines in education. They are atheist zones. If you choose to worship God, then we will have to dismiss you from civil service. Humans were made by God, so they should believe in Him and worship Him. This is an unalterable truth. You lost your source of income because of your belief in the Lord. How are you going to make a living from now on? The greatest hope in our belief in the Lord is in His coming and rapturing us into the kingdom of heaven. The path into the kingdom of heaven is one of suffering, accompanied by all kinds of coercion, tribulations. Lord, I hope you return soon and save us from this dark world. Behold, I come as a thief. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. Doesn't this show that when it comes to the Lord's return, besides his public descent upon a cloud, he also will descend in secret ways? A secret descent? Here you are. Thank you. I'd like four bows, you please. Sure, what filling do you want? I'll take a look. People from the Church of Almighty God are joining our gathering today. You must be alert. If there's any trouble, let us know right away. Okay. There are some brothers and sisters standing guard at all these intersections. Don't worry about your gathering. Here, you're bouncy. There you go. Thank you. All right, thank you. This is wonderful. We have such a rare opportunity today. Thanks be to the Lord. Hey, look, it's starting. The appearance of God has brought a new age. God's 6,000 year management plan is coming to an end, and the gate of the kingdom has been opened to all those who seek the appearance of God. Dear brothers and sisters, what are you waiting for? What is it that you seek? Do you await the appearance of God? Are you searching for the footprints of God? how the appearance of God is yearned for, and how difficult it is to find God's footprints. In an age such as this, in a world such as this, what must we do to witness the day of God's appearance? What must we do to follow the footprints of God? Such questions are faced by all those who await the appearance of God. You have all considered them on more than one occasion, but with what outcome? Where does God appear? Where are the footprints of God? Have you gained the answers? Many people's reply would be this, God appears among those who follow Him, and His footprints are among us. It's that simple. Anyone can provide a formulaic answer, but do you understand what the appearance of God is and what the footprints of God are? The appearance of God refers to His personal arrival on earth to do His work with his own identity and disposition, and in his inherent method, he descends among man to conduct the work of initiating an age and ending an age. This kind of appearance is not a form of ceremony. It is not a sign, a picture, a miracle, or a grand vision, and even less, is it kind of a religious process. It is a real and actual fact that can be touched and be held. This kind of appearance is not for the sake of following a process or for the sake of a short-term undertaking. It is, rather, for the sake of a stage of work in his management plan. The appearance of God is always meaningful 
and is always connected to his management plan. This appearance is completely different from the appearance of God's guidance, leadership, and enlightenment of man. God carries out a stage of great work each time he reveals himself. This work is different from that of any other age. It is unimaginable to man and has never been experienced by man. It is work that starts a new age and concludes the old age. And it is a new and improved form of work for the salvation of mankind. Moreover, it is work of bringing mankind into the new age. That is the significance of the appearance of God. So that's how it is. Since we are searching for the footprints of God, we must search for God's will, for the words of God, for the utterances of God. For where there are the new words of God, there is the voice of God. And where there are the footsteps of God, there are the deeds of God. Where there is the expression of God, there is the appearance of God. And where there is the appearance of God, there exists the truth, the way, and the life. These words are wonderful. They are. While seeking the footprints of God, you ignored the words that God is the truth, the way, and the life. So when many people receive the truth, they do not believe that they have found the footprints of God, and much less acknowledge the appearance of God. What a serious error that is. The appearance of God cannot be reconciled with the conceptions of man, much less can God appear at the behest of man. God makes his own choices and has his own plans when he does his work. Moreover, he has his own objectives and his own methods. It is not necessary for him to discuss the work he does with man or to seek the advice of man, much less notify each and every person of his work. This is the disposition of God Amen. and, moreover, should be recognized by everyone. If you desire to witness the appearance of God, if you wish to follow the footprints of God, then you must first transcend your own conceptions. You must not demand that God do this or that, much less should you place him within your own confines and limit him to your own conceptions. Instead, you should ask how you should seek the footprints of God, how you should accept the appearance of God, and how you should submit to the new work of God. That is what should be done by man. Since man is not the truth and is not possessed of the truth, man should seek, accept, and obey. Amen. Amen. Wow, these words are just wonderful. An average person couldn't say these things. These words are full of light. They very clearly explain the path of seeking God's appearance in his work. This is the first time we've heard anything like this. Yes, this is wonderful. It really is full of light. Thanks be to God. Let's read a few passages of Almighty God's words. Great! Everyone, please turn to page three. Almighty God says, he who is God's incarnation shall hold the substance of God. And he who is God's incarnation shall hold the expression of God. Since God becomes flesh, he shall bring forth the work he must do. And since God becomes flesh, he shall express what he is. And shall be able to bring the truth to man. Bestow life upon man and show man the way. Flesh that does not contain the substance of God is surely not the incarnate God. 
Of this there is no doubt. To investigate whether it is God's incarnate flesh, man must determine this from the disposition he expresses and the words he speaks, which is to say whether or not it is God's incarnate flesh and whether or not it is the true way must be judged from his substance. And so, in determining whether it is the flesh of God incarnate, the key is to pay attention to his substance, his work, his words, his disposition, and many more, rather than external appearance. Thanks be to Amen. God. Thanks be to God. Sister, I'd like to read a passage. Okay. When Jesus came into the world of man, he brought the age of grace and ended the age of law. During the last days, God once more became flesh. And when he became flesh this time, he ended the age of grace and brought the age of kingdom. All those who accept the second incarnation of God will be led into the age of kingdom and be able to personally accept the guidance of God. Though Jesus did much work among man, he only completed the redemption of all mankind and became man's sin offering, and did not rid man of all his corrupt disposition. Fully saving man from the influence of Satan not only required Jesus to take on the sins of man as the sin offering, but also required God to do greater work to completely rid man of his disposition, which has been corrupted by Satan. And so, after man was forgiven his sins, God has returned to flesh to lead man into the new age and begun the work of chastisement and judgment. And this work has brought man into a higher realm. All those who submit under his dominion shall enjoy higher truth and receive greater blessings. They shall truly live in the light and shall gain the truth, the way, and the life. Amen. Amen. Wow, Almighty God's words sound like the truth to me. They surely come from the Holy Spirit. Now that you've heard Almighty God's words, what do you think? I've never heard such wonderful words. Thanks be to God. As we wait for the Lord's return, we should seek God's footsteps. The Lord Jesus said, He that seeks finds, and to him that knocks it shall be opened. Amen. Amen. In Revelation, it's prophesied, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. Amen. Right. In seeking God's footsteps, we should seek the utterances of the Holy Spirit and seek to hear God's voice. This is the only way we can welcome God's appearance. Yes. Almighty God's words very clearly explain God's appearance and work. And think about it, everyone. If these words hadn't been uttered by the Holy Spirit, would we be able to understand this? We couldn't. Yes, that's right. Outside of God, who could speak this way? Who could reveal these mysteries of the truth? Who could explain the truth and significance of God's appearance so clearly? Only God. Only God. Yes, only God. Almighty God is the Son of Man incarnate, revealing himself to work and speak. He has expressed many truths and unveiled the mysteries of God's work. Yes. If we can determine that, Almighty God's words are utterances from the Holy Spirit. Everyone, please give this some thought. How does the Holy Spirit speak through a person? Isn't this the Holy Spirit wearing the flesh to speak? It must be. Just like the Lord Jesus, who is the Holy Spirit, realized in the flesh, when he appeared and was working, the Holy Spirit uttered words and bore witness to him. This is no small matter. Yes. When the Lord Jesus appeared and worked, many people heard his words and thought that these words contained authority and power, but they did not recognize him as the Lord. Those who recognized him, that he is the Lord, that he is Christ, first had to discover that everything expressed by the Lord Jesus is the truth and things that men cannot achieve. This was the only way they were able to recognize the appearance and work of the Son of Man. But people must pray to God and seek and gain the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit in order to achieve results. That's right. Thanks be to the Lord. 
Almighty God's words state very clearly how to recognize God's appearance and work. Let's take a look. Great. 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 Almighty God says, the appearance of God refers to his personal arrival on earth to do his work. With his own identity and disposition, and in his inherent method, he descends among man to conduct the work of initiating an age and ending an age. Amen. 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 Think back when the Lord Jesus appeared and was working. Didn't he do that by becoming flesh and coming among mankind? Didn't he come with the identity of God himself to express God's disposition? Yes, this happened. This allows us to see a fact. God's appearance and work are practical and significant. It's not as simple as supernatural as we think it is. This kind of appearance is not like when God spoke to Moses through flames or when he spoke to Job from out of the storm or when the Lord Jesus appeared in his spiritual body. To put it accurately, God's appearance refers to God himself coming to earth in the flesh, speaking with the identity of God, expressing truths, expressing his disposition, doing the work of redeeming and saving mankind, as well as starting a new age and ending the old age. Yes. From this fellowship, now I understand how God appears. When the Lord Jesus appeared and worked, he spoke and carried out his work among mankind with the identity of God himself. He expressed God's disposition of mercy and love, and he himself was nailed to the cross for man. He did a stage of the work of redeeming mankind, began the age of grace, and ended the age of law. Isn't this the appearance and work of God incarnate coming down among mankind? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Yes. The Lord Jesus has returned in the last days. He is Almighty God in the flesh. He speaks, expresses the truth, and expresses God's righteous disposition with the identity of God himself. He is doing the work of judgment beginning with the house of God, and he has come to purify, save, and perfect mankind, bring people into God's kingdom, and end the entire old age. This is God's appearance and work in the last days. Now I see. Yes. God's appearance and work are so real, so practical. We never could have realized that on our own. We used to gaze at the clouds in the sky and wait for the Lord's coming. But we didn't seek out the words of the Holy Spirit or seek to hear the Lord's voice. That was so foolish. If we hadn't read Almighty God's words today, we would still be feeling our way forward in the dark like blind people. Where else could we hear the voice of God? I wonder. Thanks be to God. Apparently to seek God's appearance and work, we had to actively seek the truth and seek out God's voice. Yes, this is the right path. These years, the Church of Almighty God has been bearing witness that the Lord has appeared and is working in the last days. This fulfills the Lord Jesus' prophecy. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. And, and will sup with, with him, him and, and he, he with, me. with me. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. We've been reading the Bible all these years, but never understood the Lord's words. Yeah. Now, after investigating the work of Almighty God and hearing the voice of God, I finally understand the Lord's prophecies. Yes. This is God's grace for us. It is the leadership of the Holy Spirit and God's blessing. It is. Thanks be to the Lord. Thanks be to God's grace. Thanks be to God. You say that Almighty God's words are the voice of God himself, but I'm not so sure. As I see it, this is the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. If Almighty God really was the return Lord Jesus, then we should have already been raptured. But we haven't seen anyone raptured. Almighty God's words are the truth, and they are really practical, really precious. But is Almighty God really the appearance and the work of the Lord? I really can't make hazard tales of this. I don't think Almighty God could possibly be the appearance of the Lord. If Almighty God were the Lord Jesus returned, we would be raptured first. We've believed in the Lord for years, and to welcome His coming, we pray night and day. We exert ourselves working hard for Him, and we've suffered so much. If Almighty God were the appearance and work of the Lord, 
Why wouldn't he rapture us first? Why would he first rapture the people of Eastern Lightning? It's not fair. That's right. If the Lord had returned, he would have raptured us first. That would be fair and reasonable. Otherwise, we absolutely cannot accept the way of Eastern Lightning. Brother Luo, Sister Ma, you say that if the Lord has returned, he should have raptured you first? Are all these words a revelation from God? Is there a biblical basis for this? There are so many people who believe in the Lord. Why would he rapture you first? Are you Peter? Isn't that an arrogant thing to say? The book of Proverbs says, A haughty spirit goes before a fall. The Lord Jesus said, But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Amen. Amen. I never understood these words before, but now I've seen how practical they are and that they've been entirely fulfilled. Those who first heed the Lord's voice and accept his appearance and work are the wise virgins and will be raptured first. Yes. All those who do not take heed of the Lord's voice but only gaze at the clouds in the sky are the foolish virgins. No matter how long the wise virgins have believed, because they welcomed him first, they will be raptured first. Yes. The foolish virgins do not heed the voice of the Lord. So no matter how long they've believed in the Lord or how long they've suffered, when the Lord comes, they will be discarded. Right. right. The Lord's utterances in his return expose people. People will be raptured based on whether or not they are able to heed the Lord's voice. That's right. Yes. If you hear that Almighty God's words are the voice of God, but you stubbornly refuse to accept him, and you even complain that God is unfair, isn't this rebelling against and resisting the Lord? It is. Fresh brined tofu! Tofu for sale! Tofu for sale! Excuse me, sir. Can I borrow a pump? Sure. We have quite a few people coming today. The CCP has many eyes. We absolutely cannot let our guard down. Mm. Got it. Uh, all right. Thank you, sir. No problem. I've made the rounds, Jay. I didn't find anything going on. Yeah, over here I have Mr. it. Mr. Howe! Mr. Howe! There's something going on. What is it? What is it? I've been watching Wang Chang's house. I took a photo of all of them. I've never seen some of them before. I haven't seen them either. Hmm. This one seems to be in charge. Yeah, it looks like it. Hmm. Looks like it. Hmm. Doesn't it? They must be having a gathering. If we arrest them all, we'll definitely be seeing a bonus. Then what are we waiting for? Let's get on it. Okay. Thanks be to God, this kind of fellowship on God's words is so good for our understanding, our grasp. The truth becomes clearer through debate. There are still some brothers and sisters who have been unable to fully determine that Almighty God's words are the voice of God. What kind of problem is that? Only faith in Almighty God's words as truth will help you see that it is God's voice. The Lord Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So what does his voice refer to? What is it about? His voice doesn't refer to the way his voice sounds, but it refers to God's utterances, the truth that he speaks. Oh. Aha, uh -huh, now I get it. The greatest difference between the voice of God and the voice of man is this. God's voice is what comes from his own mouth. It is all the truth and it is full of authority and power. We can feel that when we hear it. Whether we can explain it clearly or not, that kind of feeling is right. Indeed. And we can feel that God's words are profound and cannot be fathomed by people. When people hear the words of God, they believe it is his voice. Yes, it is that kind of feeling. Mm. But when we hear people's words, they're just understandable and reachable. Although words spoken by people from the enlightenment and illumination of the Holy Spirit are helpful and beneficial for us, there is no feeling of the authority and power. Yes. 
It's just like the words of the apostles in the Bible. They come from man. They are an interpretation of God's words. Most of them come from the Holy Spirit's enlightenment, but they're entirely different from the words of the Lord Jesus. That's a fact. With this kind of fellowship, I understand now. I'll be able to discern God's voice. I could too now. Thanks be to God. Let's read more of Almighty God's words. Everyone listen. See if Almighty God's words really are the truth or not. If they really are the voice of God, what do you say? Great. Good? Okay? Oh, great. I gave my glory to Israel and then took it away. And afterward, I brought the Israelites to the east and all of humanity to the east. I have brought them all to the light so that they may be reunited with it and be in association with it and no longer have to search for it. I shall let all who are searching see the light again and see the glory I had in Israel. I shall let them see that I have long ago come down upon a white cloud into the midst of mankind. Let them see the countless clouds of white and fruits in their abundant clusters. And what is more, let them see Jehovah God of Israel. I shall let them look upon the master of the Jews, the longed for Messiah, and the full appearance of me, who have been persecuted by kings throughout the ages. I shall work upon the entire universe, and I shall perform great work, revealing all my glory and all my deeds to man in the last days. I shall show my glorious countenance in its fullness to those who have waited many years for me, to those who have longed for me to come upon a white cloud, to Israel that has longed for me to appear once again, and to all mankind who persecute me, so that all will know that I have long ago taken away my glory and brought it to the east so that it is no longer in Judea, for the last days have already come. This really is the voice this of is God. This is God speaking to us, isn't it? Throughout the universe, I am doing my work, and in the east, thunderous crashes issue forth endlessly, shaking all denominations, it is my voice that has led all men into the present. I shall cause all men to be conquered by my voice, to fall into this stream and submit before me. For I have long since reclaimed my glory from all the earth and issued it forth anew in the east. Who does not long to see my glory? Who does not anxiously await my return? Who does not thirst for my reappearance? Who does not pine for my loveliness? Who would not come to the light? Who would not look upon the richness of Canaan? Who does not long for the return of the Redeemer? Who does not adore the great Amen. Almighty? My voice shall spread throughout the earth. I wish, facing my chosen people, to speak more words to them. Like the mighty thunders that shake the mountains and rivers, I speak my words to the whole universe and to mankind. Hence, the words in my mouth have become man's treasure, and all men cherish my words. The lightning flashes from the east all the way to the west. My words are such that man is loath to give them up and at the same time finds them unfathomable, but rejoices in them all the more. Like a newborn infant, all men are glad and joyful, celebrating my coming. By means of my voice, I shall bring all men before me. 
thenceforth I shall formally enter into the race of men so that they will come to worship me. With the glory that I radiate and the words in my mouth, I shall make it such that all men come before me and see that the lightning flashes from the east and that I have also descended unto the Mount of Olives of the east. They will see that I have already long been on earth, no longer as the son of the Jews, but as the lightning of the east. For I have long since been resurrected and have departed from mankind's midst and then reappeared with glory among men. I am he who was worshipped countless ages before now, and I am also the infant forsaken by the Israelites countless ages before now. Moreover, I am the all-glorious, almighty God of the present age. Let all come before my throne and see my glorious countenance, hear my voice, and look upon my deeds. This is the entirety of my will. It is the end and the climax of my plan, as well as the purpose of my management. Let every nation worship me, every tongue acknowledge me, every man repose his faith in me, and every people be subject unto me. Amen. Almighty God's words are so stirring. They are. I really feel like God's speaking to us from the third heaven. Yes. 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 Almighty God's words are so authoritative, so powerful. This is entirely different than the words of a human being. It is God's voice. I agree. Thanks be to God. I took the words expressed by God as enlightenment from the Holy Spirit. I was so blind not to recognize God. I finally understand. Thanks be to God. Sister Tong, Sister Fang. Yes? After reading Almighty God's words, we all have this conviction. All of Almighty God's words are the truth, and they are the voice of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. They are the voice of God. But there's something I still don't understand. Go on. It's that the Lord Jesus once said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The Lord Jesus returned to heaven to prepare a place for us. So that means the place he prepared should be in heaven. Yes. If the Lord has returned, it should be to rapture us into heaven, to first lift us up into the sky to meet with the Lord. Yes. yes. What you're bearing witness to now is that the Lord Jesus has become flesh on earth, speaking and working. So how is he going to lift us up to the kingdom of heaven? Is the kingdom of heaven on earth, or is it in heaven? You go ahead. As for that... Brother Chen, huh? there's trouble. There are police in the village. What? It's not safe for us to have fellowship here. Everyone disperse immediately. Get the books and leave separately. Some from the front, okay, some from okay. the back. Brother, please organize everyone. Okay, you go ahead. Sister Tong, Sister Feng, let's go. Okay. okay. Zhang Guan, Mingui. Once we're through this big cornfield, the place is just ahead. Oh, this place is really hidden. From here on, we can feel at ease while having our gatherings. Yes. Thanks be to God. As for whether the kingdom of heaven is actually in heaven or on the earth, this is something that many people can't figure out. It's something we should have fellowship on. Yes. yes. First, we must understand what the kingdom of heaven really is. Everyone knows that heaven usually refers to the celestial, refers to God. So naturally, the kingdom of heaven refers to God's kingdom, and it is the kingdom where God is in power. It is Christ's kingdom. Wouldn't you all say so? Yes. So then is God's kingdom on earth, or is it in heaven? First, let's look at what the Lord's Prayer says.
Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Aren't the Lord Jesus' words very clear? The Lord requires that we pray for God's kingdom to come down to earth so that his will may be carried out on earth. The Lord Jesus did not say that God's kingdom would be established in heaven, and he particularly did not have us hope and pray for the day we would be raptured up to heaven. Think about it. Isn't that true? That's true. So isn't always hoping to be taken up to heaven to enter into God's kingdom out of line with the Lord's words and out of line with his will? Let's take a look at a prophecy in Revelation, chapter 11, verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And then there's chapter 21, verses 2 to 4. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen. Amen. Take a careful look. These two passages mention these two things. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. The tabernacle of God is with men. These refer to the kingdom of Christ being realized on earth. Almighty God's work of judgment in the last days is to establish the kingdom of Christ on earth. Before the great disaster comes upon the earth, God is going to make a group of overcomers and this group will be the pillars of God's kingdom. They are the ones who will rule alongside God in the kingdom of Christ. Great. In the disaster, those who have been perfected by God will be the people of God's kingdom. Those who have never accepted Almighty God's work in the last days will be exposed and eliminated by God, and they will have no part of the kingdom of Christ. Oh, so that's how it is. The prophecies in the book of Revelation start with the utterances of God incarnate in the last days, and then go to the end of the great disaster when the kingdom of Christ is realized on earth, and then go on to the eternity of a new heaven and a new earth. When these prophecies are all fulfilled and completed, God's management plan will fully be fulfilled. At this point, do you think the kingdom of heaven prophesied in the book of Revelation is actually on earth or in heaven? It's, it's on, on earth. earth. Yes, that's right. The kingdom of Christ is on earth. So, all those who accept Almighty God's work in the last days, as long as they have been purified and perfected, will be the people of the kingdom of Christ. They are the ones who God will make into the group of overcomers before the disaster. They are those who are able to heed God's words and obey and worship Him. When the great disaster comes, those people will be protected and kept by God. Amen. Thanks be to God. But those who live in vagueness and imagination, who just long to be raptured into the sky and meet with the Lord, but do not accept Christ's judgment and purification in the last days, will be dealt with in the disaster. Most people will be destroyed. A few people will turn toward God through the crucible of the disaster. These are all true things that God is going to do soon. The work of God is so wise. Now, does everyone understand whether the kingdom of Christ is in heaven or if it's on earth? We understand. Thanks be to God. So God's kingdom is on earth after all. The prophecies in the book of Revelation are so clear, but we never figured it out. We really have been blind. The prophecies in the Bible are so profound. Without hearing this kind of fellowship, how could we possibly have understood them? 
It clearly says in the Lord's Prayer, Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The Lord's words are crystal clear. God's kingdom is on earth, and his will will be carried out on earth. That's right. We used to recite this every day. How could we not understand? Thanks be to God. After today's fellowship, we understand that God's kingdom is on earth, not in heaven. Yes. yes. But I still have a question I can't figure out. The Lord Jesus promised us, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. How should we understand these words of his? Where did the Lord really go to prepare a place for us? Is there some kind of mystery within these words? Sister Fang, Sister Tong, please share more of your fellowship. Yes. yes. Okay. You're absolutely right. There really are mysteries within the Lord's words. If we look at them through our own notions and imaginations, then the Lord Jesus returned to heaven, so he was certainly preparing a place for us in heaven. Looking at it that way is a huge mistake. In God's work, we absolutely cannot rely on our own notions and imaginations because his work is unfathomable for human beings. We can only gain clarity on these things once he has completed them and they have been laid out in front of us. Wouldn't everyone say that this is the case? Yes, it is. Yes. I didn't understand either until after I had accepted Almighty God's work in the last days and I had seen the facts of the work that he has completed. The Lord Jesus returning to prepare a place for us was actually for us to be born in the last days, accept the work of God incarnate in the last days, undergo his judgment, be purified and perfected, and finally to be brought into the kingdom of Christ. Amen. 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 We are so fortunate. Thanks be to God. Think about it. God has become flesh and walks among mankind. He has expressed the truth to do the work of judgment in the last days. And we have heard the voice of God and are raised up to stand before him. Is this not him coming yes. to meet us? We eat and drink God's words, experience his work, and attend the feast with God. Isn't that meeting the Lord? Is that not coming face to face with the Lord? Yes. When the day comes that God's work is complete, when we have been purified and perfected, we'll be brought into God's kingdom. Christ reigns in the kingdom of God, and we will worship God as his people in his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Doesn't this fulfill the Lord's prophecy? Where I am, there, there you may, may be also. also. Amen. Amen. So this is how the Lord's words are fulfilled. Yes, that's it. Thanks be to God. Is everyone clear on the meaning behind the Lord Jesus' words through my fellowship? Yes. Accepting Almighty God's work in the last days is us being lifted up before God. It's so practical. It is. Thanks be to God. The more of this fellowship on the truth we have, the brighter our hearts become. You're right. I've been thinking. God clearly stated in the book of Revelation that the kingdom of Christ would be realized on earth. So why do those in the religious world long for the Lord to rapture them into heaven? Yeah, why is everyone hoping for that? The pastors and elders spend all day explaining the book of Revelation. But why don't they know that the kingdom of Christ will be realized on earth? Is it that they're just dazzled by their desire for blessings? We haven't investigated God's appearance and work in the last days. We've stubbornly held on to our own imaginations, waiting for the Lord to descend on a cloud to bring us into his kingdom. Thinking about it now, that was so vague, so absurd. It wasn't realistic at all. It seems that the expectations of the religious world are nothing more than imagination. They have nothing to do with the Lord's promises. They are entirely contrary to God's will and the truth of what he's going to achieve. That's really true. Oh, human notions and imaginations can really do a sin. If we read more of Almighty God's words, these problems can be resolved. <laughs> Only Almighty God can save us. Right. right. We give thanks to Almighty thanks God. Thanks to Almighty God. God. Brothers and sisters, let's read a few passages from Almighty God's words. See how the kingdom of Christ will be realized on earth. 
what the beauty of the kingdom will be, okay? Great, great. 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 What is it? Wonderful. Please turn to page 308. Almighty God says, The kingdom is expanding in humanity's midst. It is forming in humanity's midst. It is standing up in humanity's midst. There is no force that can destroy my kingdom. Amen. Amen. I am now walking abroad in the midst of my people. I live in the midst of my people. Today, those who bear genuine love toward me, people like these are blessed. Blessed are those who submit to me. They will surely stay in my kingdom. Blessed are those who know me. They will surely wield power in my kingdom. Amen. 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 Blessed are those who seek after me. They will surely escape from Satan's bonds and enjoy blessing in me. Blessed are those who are able to forsake themselves. They will surely enter into my possession and inherit my kingdom's bounty. Amen. Those who run around for my sake, I will commemorate. Those who go to expense for my sake, I will joyfully embrace. Those who make offering to me, I will give enjoyments. Those who find enjoyment in my words, I will bless. They will surely be the pillars that hold up the ridge pole in my kingdom. They will surely have matchless bounty in my house, and no one can compare with them. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Have you ever accepted the blessings that you were given? Have you ever sought the promises that you were made? You will surely, under the guidance of my light, break through the stranglehold of the forces of darkness. You will surely not, in the midst of darkness, lose the light guiding you. You will surely be the master of all creation. Amen. You will surely be an overcomer before Satan. Amen. You will surely, at the downfall of the kingdom of the great red dragon, stand up amid the myriad throngs to bear witness to my victory. Amen. Amen. You will surely be resolute and unwavering in the land of Sinem. Through the sufferings you endure, you will inherit the blessing that comes from me and will surely irradiate within the entire universe with my glory. Amen. Amen. Wow, God's words contain Amen. such authority. Maybe God's words are so wonderful. Yes, he's given us such promise. He has. Sister, I'd like to read. Great. Following the completion of my words, the kingdom is gradually formed on earth, and man is gradually returned to normality. And thus there is established on earth the kingdom in my heart. In the kingdom... All the people of God recover the life of normal man. Gone is the frosty winter, replaced by a world of cities of spring, where it is spring all year round. No longer are people faced with the gloomy, miserable world of man. No longer do they endure the cold chill of the world of man. People do not fight with each other. Countries do not go to war against each other. No longer is there carnage, and the blood that flows from carnage. All lands are filled with happiness, and everywhere teems with warmth between men. Amen. I move throughout the world. I enjoy from atop my throne. I live among the stars. And the angels offer unto me new songs and dances. No longer does their own fragility cause tears to run down their faces. No longer do I hear before me the sound of angels weeping, and no longer does anyone complain of hardship to me. Amen. Amen. Today, you all live before me. Tomorrow, you will all exist in my kingdom. Amen. Amen. Is this not the greatest blessing that I bestow upon man? Amen. Amen. Life in the kingdom will be glorious. Thanks be to God. God has bestowed such great blessings on mankind. Yes. Sister Fang, I'd like to read, too. Wonderful. Once the work of his conquest has been completed, man will be brought into a beautiful world. This life will, of course, still be on Earth, but it will be totally unlike man's life today. It is the life that mankind will have after the whole of mankind has been conquered it will be a new beginning for man on earth. Amen. And for mankind to have such a life 
will be proof that mankind has entered a new and beautiful realm. Amen. It will be the beginning of life of man and God on earth. The premise of such a beautiful life must be that after man has been purified and conquered, he submits before the Creator. And so, the work of conquest is the last stage of God's work before mankind enters the wonderful destination. Amen. 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 That's great. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Such a life is man's future life on earth. It is the most beautiful life on earth, the kind of life that man longs for, the kind that man has never before achieved in the history of the world. It is the final outcome of the 6,000 years of work of management. It is what mankind yearns for most, and it is also God's promise to man. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. <laughs> Almighty God's words are amazing. I'd like to read a passage as well. Okay. Right here. Okay. When humanity has been restored to their original likeness, when humanity can fulfill their respective duties, keep their own place, and obey all of God's arrangements, God will have obtained a group of people upon the earth who worship him. And he will also have established a kingdom upon the earth that worships him. Amen. Amen. He will have eternal victory upon the earth. And those who are opposed to him will perish for all eternity. This will restore his original intention in creating man. It will restore his intention in creating all things. And it will also restore his authority upon earth. His authority among all things and his authority among his enemies. These are the symbols of his total victory. Amen. Amen. Henceforth, humanity will enter into rest and enter into a life that follows the right track. God will also enter into eternal rest with man and enter into an eternal life shared by God and man. Amen. Amen. The filth and disobedience upon the earth shall disappear, as shall the wailing upon the earth. All upon the earth that opposes God will not exist. Only God and those people that he has saved shall remain. Only his creation shall remain. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let's read another passage. Yes. yes. Almighty God says, I move above all men, and I am watching everywhere. Nothing ever looks old, and no person is as he used to be. I rest upon the throne. I recline across the whole universe. I am fully satisfied, for all things have recovered their holiness, and I can peacefully reside within Zion once again. And the people on earth can lead serene, contented lives under my guidance. All peoples are managing everything in my hand. All peoples have regained their former intelligence and original appearance. Amen. They are no longer covered with dust but in my kingdom are as pure as jade, each with a face like that of the Holy One within man's heart. For my kingdom has been established among man. Amen. 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 <sighs> I'd like to read. Throughout the world, only God and man exist. There is no dust or dirt and all things are renewed. Like a little lamb lying in a green grassland beneath the sky, enjoying all of God's grace. And it's because of the arrival of this greenness that the breath of life shines forth. For God comes to the world to live alongside man for all eternity. Amen. Amen. Just as it was said from God's mouth that I can peacefully reside within Zion once again. This is the symbol of Satan's defeat. It is the day of God's rest. And this day shall be extolled and proclaimed by all people and, and commemorated by all people. When, when God, God is at rest upon the throne is also when God concludes his work on earth. And is the very moment that all of God's mysteries are shown to man. God and man will be forever in harmony, never apart. 
These are the beautiful scenes of the kingdom. Amen. Thanks be to God. So this is how God's kingdom will come into being on the earth. God's work is so practical. It is. God's judgment in the last days purifies all his people and accomplishes the emergence of his kingdom on earth. His work in the last days is so meaningful. Amen. <gasps> yes, it's so fortunate that we have looked into Almighty God's work. It's the only way we can hear his voice, witness his appearance, and be lifted up in front of him. Without investigating his work in the last days, by just taking the pastors and elders at their word, wouldn't we miss this opportunity? Right. That's so true. Who could have thought accepting the judgment and purification of God in the last days would be the only path to being raptured? Amen. Amen. Accepting Almighty God is such a blessing for us. It I is. Our God. hopes for the Lord's return have finally been fulfilled. This is the day we've been waiting for. Thinking back to what the Lord Jesus said 2,000 years ago, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now the Lord Jesus has returned, and we are so fortunate to be raised up before God's throne and accept the judgment and chastisement of his words. We can be made into overcomers before the disaster, and in the end, we will be brought into his kingdom. All of this really is God's grace and blessing for us. Thanks be to Almighty God. Who is it? Hello? I'm Mr. Zhao. I'm looking for Xinqing Wang. Shangguan, come see who's here for you. Brother Xiao.